Chapter 14 of the Hindu Yogi Science of Breath by William Walker Atkinson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Phenomena of Yogi Psychic Breathing With the exception of the instructions in the Yogi Rhythmic Breathing, the majority of the exercises heretofore given in this book relate to the physical plane of effort, which, while highly important in itself, is also regarded by the yogis as in the nature of affording a substantial basis for efforts on the psychic and spiritual plane. Do not, however, discard or think lightly of the physical phase of the subject, for remember that it needs a sound body to support a sound mind, and also that the body is the temple of the ego, the lamp in which burns the light of the spirit. Everything is good in its place, and everything has its place. The developed man is the all-around man, who recognizes body, mind, and spirit, and renders to each its due. Neglect of either is a mistake which must be rectified sooner or later, a debt which must be repaid with interest. We will now take up the psychic phase of the yogi science of breath in the shape of a series of exercises, each exercise carrying with it its explanation. You will notice that in each exercise, rhythmic breathing is accompanied with the instructions to carry the thought of certain desired results. This mental attitude, which gives the will a clear track upon which to exercise its force. We cannot, in this work, go into the subject of the power of the will, and must assume that you have some knowledge of the subject. If you have no acquaintance with the subject, you will find that the actual practice of the exercises themselves will give you a much clearer knowledge than any amount of theoretical teaching. For as the old Hindu proverb says, He who tastes a grain of mustard seed knows more of its flavor than he who sees an elephant load of it. 1. General Directions for Yogi Psychic Breathing The basis of all yogi psychic breathing is the yogi rhythmic breath, instruction regarding which we gave in our last chapter. In the following exercises, in order to avoid useless repetition, we will say merely, breathe rhythmically, and then give the instruction for the exercise of the psychic force, or directed willpower working in connection with the rhythmic breath vibrations. After a little practice, you will find that you will not need a count after the first rhythmic breath, as the mind will grasp the idea of time and rhythm, and you will be able to breathe rhythmically at pleasure, almost automatically. This will leave the mind clear for the sending of the psychic vibrations under the direction of the will. See the following first exercise for directions in using the will. 2. Prana Distributing Lying flat on the floor or bed, completely relaxed, with hands resting lightly over the solar plexus, over the pit of the stomach where the ribs begin to separate, breathe rhythmically. After the rhythm is fully established, will that each inhalation will draw in an increased supply of prana or vital energy from the universal supply which will be taken up by the nervous system and stored in the solar plexus at each exhalation will that the prana or vital energy is being distributed all over the body to every organ and part to every muscle cell and atom to nerve artery and vein from the top of your head to the soles of your feet invigorating, strengthening, and stimulating every nerve, recharging every nerve center, sending energy, force, and strength all over the system. While exercising the will, try to form a mental picture of the inrushing prana, coming in through the lungs and being taken up at once by the solar plexus. Then with the exhaling effort being sent to all parts of the system, down to the fingertips and down to the toes. It is not necessary to use the will with an effort. Simply commanding that which you wish to produce and then making the mental picture of it is all that is necessary. Calm command with the mental picture is far better than forcible willing, which only dissipates force needlessly. The above exercise is most helpful and greatly refreshes and strengthens the nervous system and produces a restful feeling all over the body. It is especially beneficial in cases where one is tired or feels a lack of energy. 3. Inhibiting Pain 
Lying down or sitting erect, breathe rhythmically, holding the thought that you are inhaling prana. Then when you exhale, send the prana to the painful part to reestablish the circulation and nerve current. Then inhale more prana for the purpose of driving out the painful condition. Then exhale, holding the thought that you are driving out the pain. Alternate the two above mental commands. And with one exhalation, stimulate the part, and with the next, drive out the pain. Keep this up for seven breaths. Then practice the cleansing breath and rest a while. Then try it again until relief comes, which will be before long. Many pains will be found to be relieved before the seven breaths are finished. If the hand is placed over the painful part, you may get quicker results. Send the current of prana down the arm and into the painful part. 4. Directing the circulation. Lying down or sitting erect, breathe rhythmically. And with the exhalations, direct the circulation to any part you wish, which may be suffering from imperfect circulation. This is effective in cases of cold feet or in cases of headache, the blood being sent downward in both cases. In the first case, warming the feet, and in the latter, relieving the brain from too great pressure. In the case of headache, try the pain inhibiting first, then follow with sending the blood downward. You will often feel a warm feeling in the legs as the circulation moves downward. The circulation is largely under the control of the will, and rhythmic breathing renders the task easier. 5. Self-Healing Lying in a relaxed condition, breathe rhythmically, and command that a good supply of prana be inhaled. With the exhalation, send the prana to the affected part for the purpose of stimulating it. Vary this occasionally by exhaling, with the mental command that the disease condition be forced out and disappear. Use the hands in this exercise, passing them down the body from the head to the affected part. In using the hands in healing yourself or others, always hold the mental image that the prana is flowing down the arm and through the fingertips into the body, thus reaching the affected part and healing it. Of course, we can give only general directions in this book without taking up the several forms of disease in detail. But a little practice of the above exercise, varying it slightly to fit the conditions of the case, will produce wonderful results. Some yogis follow the plan of placing both hands on the affected part, and then breathing rhythmically, holding the mental image that they are fairly pumping prana into the diseased organ and part, stimulating it and driving out diseased conditions as pumping into a pail of dirty water will drive out the ladder and fill the bucket with fresh water. This last plan is very effective if the mental image of the pump is clearly held, the inhalation representing the lifting of the pump handle and the exhalation the actual pumping. 6. Healing Others We cannot take up the question of the psychic treatment of disease by prana in detail in this book, as such would be foreign to its purpose but we can and will give you simple, plain instructions whereby you may be enabled to do much good in relieving others. The main principle to remember is that by rhythmic breathing and controlled thought, you are enabled to absorb a considerable amount of prana and are also able to pass it into the body of another person, stimulating weakened parts and organs and imparting health and driving out diseased conditions. You must first learn to form such a clear mental image of the desired condition that you will be able to actually feel the influx of prana and the force running down your arms and out of your fingertips into the body of the patient. Breathe rhythmically a few times until the rhythm is fairly established. Then place your hands upon the affected part of the body of the patient, letting them rest lightly over the part. Then follow the pumping process described to the preceding exercise, self-healing and fill the patient full of prana until the disease condition is driven out. Every once in a while, raise the hands and flick the fingers as if you were throwing off the disease condition. It is well to do this occasionally and also to wash the hands after treatment, as otherwise you may take on a trace of the disease condition of the patient. Also practice the cleansing breath several times after the treatment. During the treatment, let the prana pour into the patient in one continuous stream, 
allowing yourself to be merely the pumping machine reconnecting the patient with the universal supply of prana and allowing it to flow freely through you. You need not work the hands vigorously, but simply enough that the prana freely reaches the affected parts. The rhythmic breathing must be practiced frequently during the treatment, so as to keep the rhythm normal and to afford the prana a free passage. It is better to place the hands on the bare skin, but where this is not advisable or possible, place them over the clothing. Vary above method occasionally during the treatment by stroking the body gently and softly with the fingertips, the fingers being kept slightly separated. This is very soothing to the patient. In cases of long standing, you may find it helpful to give the mental command in words, such as, get out, get out, or be strong, be strong, as the case may be, the words helping you to exercise the will more forcibly, and to the point. Vary these instructions to suit the needs of the case, and use your own judgment and invented faculty. We have given you the general principles and you can apply them in hundreds of different ways. The above apparently simple instruction, if carefully studied and applied, will enable one to accomplish all that the leading magnetic healers are able to, although their systems are more or less cumbersome and complicated. They are using prana ignorantly and calling it magnetism. If they would combine rhythmic breathing and their magnetic treatment, they would double their efficiency. 7. Distant Healing Prana colored by the thought of the sender may be projected to persons at a distance who are willing to receive it and healing work done in this way. This is the secret of the absent healing, of which the Western world has heard so much of late years. The thought of the healer sends forth and colors the prana of the sender, and it flashes across space and finds lodgment in the psychic mechanism of the patient. It is unseen, and like the Marconi waves, it passes through intervening obstacles and seeks the person attuned to receive it. In order to treat persons at a distance, you must form a mental image of them until you feel yourself to be en rapport with them. This is a psychic process dependent upon the mental imagery of the healer. You can feel the sense of rapport when it is established, it manifesting in a sense of nearness. That is about as plain as we can describe it. It may be acquired by little practice, and some will get it at the first trial. When rapport is established, say mentally to the distant patient, I am sending you a supply of vital force or power, which will invigorate you and heal you. Then picture the prana as leaving your mind with each exhalation of rhythmic breath, and traveling across space instantaneously and reaching the patient and healing him. It is not necessary to fix certain hours for treatment, although you may do so if you wish. The receptive condition of the patient, as he is expecting and opening himself up to your psychic force, attunes him to receive your vibrations whenever you may send them. If you agree upon hours, let him place himself in a relaxed attitude and receptive condition. The above is the great underlying principle of the absent treatment of the Western world. You may do these things as well as the most noted healers with a little practice. End of chapter 14